This is Sandra from Source News Bible Talk Show, and today we're going to take a look at uh, some things that are going on in our United States. This one here is the armed migrant gang infiltrates New York City. There's been rumors that we have uh, supercells or sleeper cells in our country because of the border problem. People are coming into this United States that want to do harm to us. So let's take a look what he has found. Okay. Armed migrant gang infiltrates New York City. Man, between New York and San Francisco, like I, I've never been to New York. As far as like, I went there when we were on a flight. I forgot where we were going, but we just went over there to get on another plane. But um, the 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 crime and everything that's happened in New York and like San Francisco. You know, and those one of the biggest cities as far as like people go to. This is crazy. That thumbnail, man, was insane. We're going to check this out. Appreciate you guys coming over and watching. Ain't going to waste no more time. Let's jump right into his New York Undercover channel. All right. A number of people have gathered in an anti-Trump kind of sentiment. Our Sarah Ganim is there. He was arrested back in November for allegedly stabbing his father. Make no mistake, it is this city's sanctuary policies that are the sole reason this criminal was allowed to roam the streets freely. And have a small number of migrants and asylum seekers that have identified that they're going to be dangerous, hide under the law. Gangs made up of undocumented immigrants are reportedly increasing in numbers in New York City. Law enforcement officials have expressed concern about the growing presence of these groups and the potential for violence and crime. While the motivations and activities of these gangs remain largely unknown, the possibility of their involvement in organized crime is causing alarm. It's focused on crime and public safety and the city's ability to collaborate with ICE to address those issues. But speaking with the city council. New York Mayor Eric Adams is prepared to overturn longstanding sanctuary city policies that have prohibited local law enforcement from working with federal immigration authorities. New York City's laws are designed to protect undocumented immigrants from being detained or deported by federal agencies. They limit how local agencies can participate in these efforts to keep promote together and promote public safety. The mayor announced that New York City law enforcement would collaborate with federal immigration authorities to remove migrants believed to have committed crimes or who have not yet completed the due process. But the move to overturn sanctuary laws came to a halt. The problem in the city keeps getting worse as New York City runs out of room to house the incoming migrants, thereby resulting in the building of temporary housing. But his idea was not fully received because the location of the temporary housing is at a bad location. Some migrants finally decided to take advantage of the system and exploit it. We turn our attention now to the dozens of migrants found living in the basement of a furniture store in Queens. What? The owner told us he allowed 74 men to live in the basement because he wanted to help them. Inspectors were called to a two-story commercial building in the Bronx to look into an illegal conversion. Upon arrival, they discovered that the store had been converted into sleeping quarters. 45 beds crammed into the first floor and cellar in violation of regulations. Sar, the owner of the stores, was emotional as he expressed his desire to assist other Africans who were seeking help after their 30-day shelter stay ended because the city had not provided further assistance. He charges over 70 men $300 each month to stay in his crowded makeshift shelter located on the first floor and basement of a furniture store in South Richmond Hill. The 30-day shelter policy was put in place to limit shelter stay by immigrants. After the 30-day shelter policy, you are on your own, and the government doesn't care about what happens to you. You are expected to reapply for shelter, and it takes up to 150 days to process. This leaves one stranded with no way to go and no job. Guess what happens next? Some of them turn to crime. But was still held due to an arrest warrant in Queens. Police are still looking for the ringleader, 30-year-old Victor Parra from Venezuela. 
Investigators say Farah would send out messages via WhatsApp, telling the group what to steal. Victor Park, a 30-year-old man who arrived in New York from Venezuela, is believed to be the ringleader of a group of thieves who used mopeds to steal phones and wallets. Para sends out messages on WhatsApp to recruit his accomplices, specifying the phone models he needs. And, and then I, I heard that there's uh, women getting yep. like punched. I don't even know if I can say it on here, but you know what the, the, the women getting punched in New York too? Yep. Oh, like this, when it's like everywhere you look around, it's just craziness going on, man. So they, they had shelter. And then once the 30 days is up, they got to find where to go on their own. And then a lot of them start to turn to crime. So you out there, you ain't got no type of street smarts. It's good night for you, you know? His major targets are new immigrant arrivals. The criminals target women who are walking alone, approaching them from behind to quickly steal their phones or handbags before running away. A scooter thief can make $100 while a phone snatcher can earn anywhere from $300 to $600. The stolen phones are taken to Para's apartment, where a tech expert hacks into them to access the victim's financial and banking apps. These apps are then used to make fraudulent purchases in the United States and Central America. The stolen phones are then sent to Colombia to be wiped during a search of Para's home. Authorities discovered 22 stolen phones and identification belonging to the victims. Five individuals have been arrested by investigators. It becomes more scary at it is believed that the people involved in these crimes belong to a very deadly Venezuelan gang called Tren de Aragua. Tren de Aragua gang is involved in a range of criminal activities such as extortion, kidnapping, robbery, contract killings, drug and human trafficking, and smuggling. As the New York Police Department has released body camera footage of the attack on two officers by a group of migrants in Times Square. On the evening of January 27th, around 8.30 p.m., a surveillance camera captured a group of men and two police officers having what appeared to be a routine and peaceful interaction. However, things took a turn for the worse when the officers tried to apprehend one of the men. Suddenly, the encounter became violent, starting with a forceful kick to one of the officers' heads oh. out of nowhere. The situation escalated rapidly. The group of men began attacking the officers, who were already on the ground, repeatedly punching and kicking them. Thankfully, the officers sustained only minor injuries and received immediate medical attention at the scene. Two days later, authorities managed to apprehend five out of the seven suspects involved in the incident, and they were released without bail. Stoking the outrage, five of them, all migrants here illegally, were released without bail. How then will New York be How safe? Bail? Henry Brito, who is known as the instigator of the fight, was granted bail of $50,000, which a priest paid off. They are all rumored to be part of the Tren de Aragua gang. It's mind-boggling that anyone would want to try to release this dangerous individual. He was arrested multiple times. How can a migrant with no steady source of income and living in a shelter afford such an amount of money? This is where it gets worse. Oh, Andres no. Gomez Isquiel, who was taken into custody as one of the individuals involved in the attack on two police officers, was arrested again. He faced charges of second-degree assault on a police officer and obstructing governmental administration, which was captured on camera and was released without bail. It's not up to a month after being taken into custody. Andres Gomez Isquiel found himself in trouble once more when he was apprehended for reportedly shoplifting and assaulting a loss prevention worker at Macy's and Queens. He was involved in a theft with others, taking clothing valued at $600 from the store, and he even physically attacked the employee who attempted to intervene. The employee sustained minor injuries as a result of the altercation. Gomez Isquiel now faces charges of robbery and petty larceny. Jesus Alejandro Rivas Figueroa, a 15-year-old boy, 15. was apprehended for shoplifting at a sporting store in Times Square. Alongside two other suspects, he was caught by a vigilant loss prevention officer. The officer requested a receipt from the boys after noticing them holding a bag filled with clothes and sneakers. When they couldn't provide one, he took back the stolen bag and attempted to question them further. Unexpectedly, Rivas Figueroa, the teenager dressed in all white, pulled out a 45 caliber handgun and fired shots at the officer in the surrounding crowd. Fortunately, the officer narrowly escaped being hit, 
But unfortunately, a 37-year-old Brazilian tourist waiting in line to purchase sneakers was struck in the knee and sustained injuries. The incident caused panic and chaos as people within the store began running and hiding. The security guard confronted them, prompting this. Watch as the teen in white walks away, then suddenly turns around, points a 45 caliber gun, and fires around. At 47th Street and 7th Avenue, NYPD patrol officers spotted two of the teenagers who had fled from the sporting shop. At that moment, one of the individuals was apprehended by the officers. Figueroa, on the other hand, managed to escape the police at 6th Avenue. However, before getting away, he dangerously fired shots at the pursuing officer. This was a highly risky situation as the area was densely populated, and any of those bullets could have tragically harmed an innocent civilian due to the presence of numerous people. The police officer refrained from firing back at the 15-year-old despite having drawn his gun. As the suspect goes through the cut between the buildings, he's running, he takes his gun out under his armpit, he fires again at our officer. He sought refuge in a subway station before heading back to his residence, where he and his mother started gathering their things to escape the city. He was apprehended while hiding in a closet at a residence in Yonkers, New York, that, within a day. The police were determined to spare no expense in apprehending him as a citywide manhunt was launched following his escape at the subway station to encourage people to come forward with information about his whereabouts. A reward of $1,000 was offered. Rivas Figueroa arrived in New York City in September of last year, and his most recent known location was the Stratford Hotel on West 70th Street, where he stayed with his mother. How is it possible that a guy without no housing and no job has a gun? Unfortunately, this is not oh, Rivas Figueroa's first offense in the Big Apple. He is suspected of being involved in an armed robbery in the Bronx on January 27th, as well as an incident on January 25th, where shots were fired in a park on 45th Street. The NYPD characterized Rebus Figueroa as a dangerous individual, armed with intent to harm not only civilians. People, this is really bad. Our cities are being uh, put in danger. Our, the people are being put in danger. Uh, it seems like there are the, the system of judicial system is not working properly. It's allowing these people out and they don't even need to pay bail because where would they find the money? This is such an incredible problem that we have in our country because of the borders of the people coming in here and finding and joining gangs or already have the gangs in place when they come here. And it seems like people are helping them for whatever reason, our own people are helping them because of their nationality, like that one guy that was helping his people from Africa. But in essence, by helping these people who have come here to do harm, you're you're adding to the problem. You know, we have to find a way to get these criminals out of our country to deport them and send them back to where they came from. We need to secure our borders because this is going to continue to escalate, increase, and get worse by the minute. And I just wanted you to see what's going on in our cities. Be careful, women walking outside by yourself. Be careful. Don't be having your phones in sight and your and your handbags. Wear something around your neck, like people who travel. Put your money and your and your phone inside your shirt. Do not carry purses if you're traveling by yourself. You are easy target. They are targeting women because they're easy. You just snatch their purse, knock them down and their phone, and they have no way of repercussion. So women, you need to really take heed to this. You need to pay attention, okay? And come back with another um, video. God bless.